Honeyman, a partner at Lyft Economy. And um, I have been doing this work for about 15 years. I'm the co-author of the B Corp Handbook uh, and generally consider myself to be a B Corp nerd. Um, and uh, I also co-host a podcast called Beyond the B, which is on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. It's about B Corps. So if folks want to nerd out, uh, feel free. And maybe let's go around and have each of the panelists introduce themselves. Um, why don't we go Adnan, Whitney, Sarah, and Paul in that order. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you, National New York, Adrian, for really putting this wonderful session together. Uh, if you haven't noticed from my background, I'm the CEO founder of uh, Zafron Road Foods. Uh, we are a leading Better For You meals brand, as well as organic chickpea snacks. Uh, we started the company maybe about 15 years ago. We've been on a great journey. Uh, we like to say that we're a journey to better, a journey to better for uh, the environment, a journey to better for livestock and humane animal welfare, a journey to better for your health, and a journey to better for humanity. And uh, I'm looking forward to today's session. Yeah, Whitney, you want to go up there? Hi, everyone. My name is Whitney Valeri. Um, I am the Compliance and Sustainability Manager at Beatbox Beverages. Um, I've been with Beatbox for a little over three years now, um, and I have spearheaded our B Corp certification, um, been the spokesperson for numerous slight visits for plastic neutral projects, um, and finalized our carbon neutral initiatives. Um, thanks, National Network, for having me in here today. Was I next? Sarah. Yeah, you're okay. up, Sarah. Awesome. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here today. Um, my name is Sarah. I'm our Senior Manager of Ops and Strategy at Tomorrow Farms. Um, here at Tomorrow Farms, we're building pantry and refrigerator stables that are better for people, kinder to animals, and easier on the planet. Our first product is an animal-free dairy milk, um, and I get to help with a lot of our sustainability efforts, such as life cycle assessments, and becoming B Corp certified. And so I'm excited to share a perspective from um, a smaller startup for those of you who might have fewer people at your company, um, fewer resources. So excited to be here and share what I've learned. So, thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm Paul Turbyville, uh, Chief Commercial Officer for Village Gourmet, which uh, owns five different food brands um, in the charcuterie and sausage space. Um, I'll mostly be talking to you about my experience previously um, at Pete and Jerry's Organics, um, leading their B Corp initiatives, um, you know, as a side job to my main job as marketing um, and sales planning lead. Um, so Pete and Jerry's is a leading organic and free range egg producer, um, was along with Cabot, I think the first um, certified B Corporation in animal agriculture. So great. Well, thanks everyone for joining. So just to give folks a framing for today, what we're gonna do, uh, and quick, I'll just quickly say, if you wanna pop any questions you have, you're holding in the chat, we'll try to answer them sort of as we go through, but just to give folks a little framing for today, what we're gonna do is have about, I'm gonna do a little five minute overview of just let's set the stage. Um, so we're all on the same page about B Corp, what it is and why it matters. And then we're gonna jump into a 20 minute panel discussion for folks on this panel to answer some of the, you know, most frequently asked questions people usually have about B Corps. And then we're gonna break into two separate uh, breakout groups. And it's interesting, we sent a pre-survey out um, and we thought maybe this group, half of you would be in like later stage and half would be beginner stage, but actually everyone who filled it out was in the beginner stage of the B Corp journey. And so rather than have a later stage and early stage group, we're gonna have two groups um, just to kind of break down the size so it's not sort of an overwhelming amount of people in one room. And then you can ask, ask questions to the, the, the five of us are going to break out into those two different rooms and, and answer questions for you. So up front, we're going to answer some of these key questions, and then we'll have time for you all to have your questions answered by some of the experts on the panel. And in the meantime, feel free to drop questions in the chat, and we'll try to take them as it comes. So... Uh, I'll just briefly set the stage on B Corp. So B Corporations are a global movement of companies who are using the power of business as a force for good. So some of you are likely familiar with Patagonia and Ben and Jerry's and King Arthur Flower and Pete and Jerry's and, you know, some of the 
um, Saffron Road, maybe. Um, and, I, you know, it's interesting. There are a large amount of um, big name sort of product companies. And also there's a large amount of service companies. So it's not only for product companies. So if you're a service provider, you can also be a B Corp. Uh, some of the key things about why, you know, we'll go into this as well, but why companies do it are things like employee engagement, you know, Gen Z and I have a 10 year old and a seven year old and they're like Gen Alpha. I don't even know what they're going to be wanting, but those very young, uh, younger generations want to work for companies with purpose. You all are in the naturally network already. So, you know, that, um, you know, people want to know how to benchmark and improve their performance. Um, so it's like having a free tool to do that as part of the B Corp process. And then one other thing is, um, you know, for many of you who are in the natural product space, there is a, so there's a certification that you have to do, but there's also a legal requirement. So the legal requirement, which some of the panelists can also speak to, means that you have to amend your articles um, either to be a benefit corporation legally, or if you're an LLC, you can amend your articles. But what it does is it puts purpose into the DNA, the legal DNA of your business. So then if you have investors who invest in your company, they will not be able to force you to maximize profit and maybe sell your, like force you to sell your company or force you to do things that you might not agree with. It has some um, protections around, you know, governance, workers, community, environment. And so there's, there's sort of more to go into potentially on the legal side. But that's one other main reason why a lot of product companies that are trying to scale would want to be a B Corp as well. So with that um, little teaser, maybe I'll turn to the panel uh, and maybe I could start off with um, Adnan. You know, I, I mentioned a few benefits of B Corp and I'm wondering if any of those three particularly stand out or what have you particularly received as a benefit of becoming a B Corp that you might share with others? Sure. Thanks for that, Ryan. Um, it's, you know, it was a definitely a grueling process. <laughs> it took us like 18 months, actually. Um, uh, it was really well worth it, though. And, and for us, it, you know, we always felt we had those values. I always like to say we sell values for value at Saffron Road. So we felt we were already like so aligned with the values around what B Lab and B Corp is all about. Um, so it was it, for us, it was a lot about just reaffirming and validating our brand values to our team. Uh, not so much, to be frank with you, as a marketing, uh, uh, you know, a, a trademark, but it's something that we did eventually put on our packaging. Uh, it's something that we do mention to buyers when we're in retail and meetings. I, I don't think it necessarily is something that closes the deal, but definitely helps when we have our conversations around the types of consumers that we're appealing to. And we do index higher now with millennials than any other brand in the frozen space. And I think a, a, a part of that is the B Corp certification. I think that, you know, the, the, the demographics that we appeal to is that more aspirational consumer. And the B Corp just puts that stamp of a golden seal on that, you know, on that genre that we have when we're approaching uh, a lot of our consumers, whether it's on social media, whether it's in store. So I think that that part's been very helpful. It's, it's not really tangible, and we never thought it would be. We never approached it from a monetary or transactional point of view. We just approached it as something that, uh, validate our values. And for the team, it was really, really helpful. I think uh, the team really understood that, you know, we're in a business that's a grind. Uh, and I tell our team every day that, you know, if you have a really tough day, just remember what the mission is and how you're bettering humanity. And, and I think the B Corp really rung that true. Even for a lot of our team members who had no idea what B Corp was, uh, it gave them that sense of really fulfillment and inspiration. Awesome. And we had some good comments in the chat coming in. And maybe Whitney, from your experience, somebody had asked, what made it grueling? And I'm curious, did your was your experience grueling um, in addition to maybe Adnan saying it was grueling for them? Um, well, for me personally, I would say it was tedious is the word that I would choose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> grueling seems a little hard. Tedious, I would say it was. Um, I was a one woman circus. Um, so I had to like seek out all of the HR, all of the sustainability, all of the supply chain data, um, on my own. So that made it a little overwhelming. Um, I kind of referred to it as like the most in-depth research project you'll ever do in your life, but it's for your own company. Um, so within the assessment, you need to provide like the correct policies that you're using to explain what your company is doing. And then not only do that, but also provide the exact 
like verbiage or the page number or whatever annotation that you had to put at the bottom of your research paper, you have to do that in every B Corp question as well. So I think that that would make it difficult because I think it's, we're like, oh, of course we offset our carbon and then be like, okay, but where and show us that. And then finding that information kind of seemed to be what was the most time consuming, tedious aspect of it, at least for us over at Beatbox. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Sarah, for you, did, you know, did you, what were the calculations? Like if someone, if you're thinking of someone in the audience who's like, should I really do this? Like, what are you really balancing in your mind? Like cost benefit? How, how did you make that decision for your company to go forward with it? Yeah. Well, for our company, we kind of felt like we were already acting like a B Corp, but just wanted to get that stamp of approval. So purpose was so baked into our mission that it just aligned really well. As I said, we're, we're making like products that are better for people, kinder to animals and easier on the planet. So it was like a very values aligned goal. Um, and I would say similarly, we kind of knew it's not something we could like calculate an ROI on, but it is something that attracts um, kind of a younger consumer who is growing to be more aware about sustainability. Um, and so I think it, it aligns with like the younger group that we're targeting. Um, and then I also just wanted to put a quick plug for any small companies. What we found that was really helpful that I didn't understand before we got into the process was that B Corp actually gives you a lot of guidance on creating your own policies and creating best practices for tracking things. So where maybe we knew we had the data somewhere, but we didn't have like an actual process to track it, B Corp would give us guidance on like, here's kind of a best practice way to do this. Um, so whether it's like adding language to your employee handbook or building out some like framework, they actually give you guidance there. So I think for a company who, even if they don't feel like they're quite, oh, we could be a B Corp, but they want to figure out how could we, it's also a good path because you're learning the entire way about like, what is the best practice for this? Love it. Um, Paul, similar for you in, you know, Pete and Jerry's uh, particular situation, did you, you know, how tough was it to sort of get it moved forward? Did you feel like the company was already operating that way? Or was there anyone that you had to sort of convince along the way? Or what were sort of the decisions you were weighing in sort of making that that choice? Sure. Yeah. So we were family owned at the time. I think, um, you know, the the family wanted to wanted to do it. So they were they were fully on board. I think Quite frankly, I mean, we certified in 2013, so B Corp was still sort of uh, figuring itself out to a certain extent at that point. Um, so, you know, I don't think that a lot of the questions were really not built for, you know, a company that does animal agriculture, for example, at the time. So I think working with them to kind of understand the intent of the question, um, that was, you know, a big part of it. Um, but no, you know, I think a lot of enthusiasm to do it. And for us, you know, we weren't at a stage where we were going to hire a you know, sustainability officer or something like that. So it was really an outsource way for us to benchmark ourselves, make sure that we actually were, were doing the things that we were saying internally were important to us and then kind of measure it and say, where do we want to invest more to do better? Yep. Um, and then there's a question in there in the chat around um, the stage of the business. Um, I'm not sure what stage you would consider Saffron Road at when you decided, but do you have any thoughts on, you know, where, how you came to that decision? I, I imagine you had heard about B Corp before you decided to do it sure. for a while. So maybe you could speak to the stage question. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I definitely knew about B Corp having been in the socially responsible biz, uh, business, you know, for 30 plus years, um, back to the SVN's roots, actually. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think the earlier, the better. We made a mistake and did it much later than we should have. I think you should do it from the get-go. I mean, if you do it from the get-go, it's just a lot easier. Uh, you set up a very strong foundation. And and dovetailing to what Sarah said, I mean, I 100% agree. The B Corp, the, the B Lab is just so helpful uh, with their guidelines, their uh, best practices, with their communications, with their trackers, with their notifications. 
Uh, they really keep you on top of the process. And 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 you're right, Whitney. What, uh, grueling is a is a, not a good word to use. It, it was tedious. It was it's just a lot of bureaucratic process work, and you have to be extremely disciplined and organized to do that. And I think what helped us is um, really getting the team involved, having a conversation with the team, make sure the whole team and the, there's a consensus around it, and then assigning a team champion to run it. Um, you know, that's the key in making them really the go-to for that project. It, it could be five or 10 hours a week for a period of a year, but making them really taking ownership of that and, and inspiring them to do it and finding somebody on your team that would really love to do it because, you know, we found somebody that was really perfect for that role. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, Whitney, one of the other uh, questions was around, um, <clears throat> sort of the consumer response. And since, you know, you're obviously a consumer facing brand, what did you what did you notice when you did it? Was it was there tangible results that you that you saw? I would say so. Before, you know, Beatbox is a fun party alcohol brand. So there's a lot of color, I guess, in your face, literally. And um, you know, when we're going to sell our product. And I think that by getting the B Corp certification, it was able to legitimize us as a like a, a brand that's going to be around for a long time to major you know retailers like Target, Walmart, Costco, because um, before they probably didn't want to deal with us as an alcohol brand. It might seem like a liability, but knowing that we are a B Corp and our company ethos and everything we do represents the B Corp ideals. It takes almost the recycling, the sustainable responsibility off of the consumer, and therefore it takes it almost off of that retailer as well. So that makes those, you know, Costco and all those massive companies want to sell our product because they already know that we as a brand are doing what we can. So I think that it gets us more in the door, it makes us have more conversations. And, you know, who doesn't love to have a drink and not feel guilty about it, you know? So I would definitely say that there are some real consumer facing positives about that. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have Paul answer a question that came in the chat on acquisition real quick. And then Sarah, I'll turn to you after that. Uh, sure. So um, just to answer that one, I saw some, maybe some trepidation about, um, you know, would, would potential acquirers not, uh, appreciate the B Corp certification. I think Pete and Jerry's went through a, a sale um, in 2021. And I would say through the entire due diligence process, it was a, a benefit um, for certain. I think most either strategics or private equity groups have ESG responsibilities. I think they're looking to partner with these types of companies. Um, and I would just say, I think if, if someone's going to acquire you that doesn't appreciate this part of your business, then that should be probably a warning sign for you anyway, um, you know, going forward. So um was definitely helpful for us. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and Sarah, maybe we could turn to the question on recommendations or advice. So if you're thinking of someone just getting started, they're like, there's a lot of overwhelming sort of like information being thrown at me. What's one, what's one something, what's one piece of advice that someone could take and sort of run with to get to that next step? Yeah, absolutely. I will say it is overwhelming. B Corp has so much information for you that it's it sometimes can feel like too much. So as like a good first step, I would say just attend the B Corp certification readiness webinar where they will literally walk you through here's the timeline, here's the current wait times that you should be experiencing once you submit your application. And then from there, you should be introduced to like your community growth manager. And so we just made sure to become like best friends with that person because yeah. we would go to their office hours whenever we had questions and we would ask them very detailed questions. And he would always do his best to like find the exact answer for us. And if not, he would go find it from someone else. And so for me, I would say just like, one, visit that webinar, get kind of the high level overview and then become best friends with that person. So you can ask them all your questions. Yeah, maybe we'll go go around on this one. Um, Paul, what's your one piece of advice for someone who's just starting out and you know, might want to move things forward? Yeah, I mean, I think um, to steal what Adnan had, had to say, I would say, you know, definitely pin the rose on one person to be the champion for it. Um, and, you know, 
pick someone who you think has a long-term potential at the company um, because it's easier to recertify if you've led, you know, a certification already. Um, so, you know, I think that person can kind of own the organization of all the files and documents uh, and put some structure in place early on so that you're not scrambling uh, in the future to find how you justified something in the past. Awesome. Um, Whitney, what about you? And we'll go to Adnan. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just like spaced out for a hot second. Um, I feel that making it be the one person is a really great way to say that, um, especially since there's so many different internal documents. Like you're going to have to reach out to different avenues of your company. Like I don't know every single thing that's baked into our healthcare plan, but you're going to need to provide that to the B Corp people. So as long as you're able to create some sort of like a checklist of like where the information is going to be funneling from, that's really one of your best tricks to staying organized. Um, and just kind of, if you just get involved, if you just start getting it in now and working on the assessment, there are all those tools at your accessibility. Awesome. And on anything you haven't heard, you want to throw in there for people? No, I think this is all pretty comprehensive. I would say uh, just exercise a lot of patience mm -hmm. um, and acceptance because, you know, things, certain things that B Corp may value in a certain way may be different than what you may be thinking. Um, and I know we had certain certifications and very high standards, which we thought were the gold standard. And some of them weren't even accepted by B Corp, which frankly was kind of annoying because our standards were much higher than what B Corp was assessing. So just, you know, don't necessarily be an evangelist, you know, be open-minded uh, and uh, understand that they have a process and you just have to go through that process. Yeah. Yeah, I will say just as a, from my experience consulting with companies on B Corp, you know, B Lab is, constantly getting innovative business models thrown at them. Like there was a story about in 2013, they had never heard of circular economy. Like, wait, so you like rent jeans or like you like rent something and then you take it back. So they didn't have any way to capture that. Right. And so B-Lab likes to say they're not perfect. They're trying to sort of keep up to date, but you may, there may be some frustration with like certain business models that are actually pretty leading edge to try and match it up to, um, you know, what's happening. So um, Whitney, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, just, um, I think what's important is when you are setting up your B lab assessment is to ensure that you're choosing the right business model that is like offered that fits your company mm. best. Um, uh, we made the mistake when we first were setting it up, be like be, uh, beatbox is like primarily third party based. We don't own any of our facilities and we set us up as if we were a manufacturing track. And that ended up like tanking a lot of the points that we were able to allocate because they didn't fit our brand at all. And but we thought that they did. So I think that that's something really close to evaluate is to make sure that when you're first setting off to create your B-Lab assessment is to ensure that it does fit your company the best way that it can, because you can think that something fits and then they take away that entire section and then you lose 25 points. So it's yeah. something that's hard to overcome. <laughs> I couldn't agree with that more, Whitney. We did the same thing initially. And, you know, because we co-man all of our products and then we weren't getting any credit for like certain environmental issues or waste or other things, which a manufacturer does get credit for. And we have no control over the co-mans in that respect. So, yeah, that was a big change for us and really helped us quite a bit. <clears throat> Sarah, um, I'm wondering if you could speak to what's like the biggest challenge you faced uh, in your process and how did you overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. For us, I think the biggest challenge was documentation. And so we wanted to be sure for any question we were answering that like we aligned with this question that we had documentation for it. And as a growing startup, we don't always have like processes in place to document everything, but it's like with someone at the company. Um, and so what we did was use like um, our team's like project management tool, Asana, and we created a board um, and put all of the requests we needed in there and assigned them to other team members who are like subject matter experts at like HR or whatever. Um, and then basically we would just copy and paste the question from B Corp and like the documentation needed and let them run with that, give them kind of like a deadline. Um, and then we would just communicate back and forth on that tool to basically put together the documentation. Um, and so I would highly recommend having buy-in from like 
senior leadership so that you can go ahead and like assign these tasks to your teammates um, because it it's a lot of work for kind of everyone at the company. It's not just on the people doing the assessment because they need help from all different functions. And our team was truly the best at this. And I feel like um, we felt really supported by B Corp and all the guidance they gave us. Awesome. And maybe Paul, similar, um, what do you wish you would have known back then when you guys were first doing it um, that maybe might help some of the folks on the call today? Um, well, I, Whitney's point around making sure you pick the right um, business initially, I think we actually at one point had to kind of get that adjusted because, um, and, and originally there really wasn't even an animal agriculture component um, that, you know, to select. So um, I guess the, the thing that I would say it's a benefit really, but um, that I didn't anticipate was the community um, and the benefits of being part of the community. I mean, I think there are a lot of outward facing benefits as well for, for a brand, but um, you know, in new England, there was a smaller group of B corporations that had, you know, an annual meeting um, having a group of people that we could bounce ideas off of um, that were all in the sort of, you know, in the B Corp community, I think was, was really helpful. So um, you are joining a community that's, I think, um, like-minded and wants to help others. Um, so. Awesome. So maybe one last question, um, and then we'll maybe head into breakouts where the we can get some more of the, you know, answer some more questions for folks. We can hear your voices as well. Um, Whitney, uh, you know, the new B Corp standards are coming out uh, in, next year, but they won't be required for companies to certify on them until 2026. But how is your company starting to think about the new standards for certification? Yeah. So of course our recertification comes right at that time mm -hmm. as the luck of the draw is. Um, so we're currently looking at our needs of improvements area. Um, before you were able to make up points, like if you weren't so great in governance, but you were incredible at sustainability, you were able to make up some of those points. Um, whereas they're changing the system to now this whole well-rounded model, which is fantastic. It should be that way. Um, but so now we're looking at those areas of, okay, so we weren't uh, allocating these points previously. What can we do to make sure that we, we pick them up now? Um, and so I think that's what we're really looking at right now. And so a lot of those aches and pains we had at the time were being a startup and dealing with a lot of those creating your own policies and process, like Sarah was saying previously, and making sure that, you know, three years down the line, our company shows the right growth on that right track in order to show all of that. So I think that's where we're spending oh, most of our time right now is looking at those needs of improvement areas, because, you know, if we're just going to keep working on trying to make our, uh, you know, emissions better, you know, they're going to get bigger as the company gets bigger, but making them, you know, more efficient that's going to come in time. So you got to look at those areas where you might've overlooked it three years ago and probably still are. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, Adrian, how are we looking for breakouts? Are we good to go? Okay. Getting thumbs up. If any of the uh, uh, panelists who attended uh, in your session, maybe from Whitney, Sarah, and Paul, what's like one or two just like big takeaways you might share with the group or highlights from your session? I'm, um, I'm not sure if, you, if one of you wants to be an informal spokesperson for your group. What what came up in your, in your group? Whitney, you look ready. Sure. <laughs> um, so we kind of talked about what you can kind of use the assessment for and like lots of areas and needs of improvements. Um, and we also kind of talked about implementing policies and, you know, different tricks to kind of integrating them into your actual company. Um, yeah, I feel like we talked about a little bit of everything. We talked about the Nespresso crisis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, Paul, Sarah, want to add anything else? No sweat. Um, yeah, we... Um, Gosh, we covered lots of things. What about, like, I mean, I think the importance of executive sponsorship was really, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, when Pete and Jerry certified, we had to make some pretty big decisions, like offering benefits to part-time workers. You know, those were things that someone, um, the the point person for the certification certainly didn't have the authority to make that call. So, um, 
you know, having strong executive sponsorship was critical to, to kind of get some of those things done. Awesome. Um, Adnan, what can you, uh, what were some of your, what, what are the things you heard and top takeaways for you? Yeah. Uh, somebody asked a very astute question that said, you know, um, what there's so many certifications nowadays how how does this differ from the other certifications uh i mean is it just another certification stamp that you put on your company uh and the i think the discussion that we had or at least the feedback i gave was that you know it's kind of like there's between outcomes and outputs right the certifications are like the outputs but the outcome really is the mission and the b lab corp certification really identifies and validates the mission of the brand of the company Whereas the certifications are really just the outcomes of, you know, us taking various transactions to bring the product to market, whether it's gluten free, whether it's halal certified, non GMO verified, uh, you know, those are really just the outcomes of what we're doing. So it was interesting conversation around that. And then uh, uh, there was also a question around how small should you be? Can you be just a one person entity and it applies to B Lab uh, or for B Corp certification? And, you know, we, we kind of, highlighted that B-Lab is pretty considered about reducing their fees for smaller companies. Um, but I kind of really stress that, and, and so did Ryan, that you really have to make sure that you have an internal champion that's going to lead it and you have the resources, time, and energy to do that. And Ryan, you brought up a really good point, as Paul just mentioned, that you could be a middle manager or somebody that's leading the process, but if you don't have buy-in from the top, uh, you're going to get very frustrated at the end game if if all of a sudden you put a year of efforts in and and the board or the management or the executive of C-suite team doesn't agree to do it. Yeah. Yes, and I see we're right about um, you know we're going to have Adrian do some wrap up. So just really want to appreciate all of you. This was um, fast paced and um, actually very fun and informational for me too. So it was great to thank to all the panelists. Um, if any of the panelists are open to sharing like, you know, website or email so folks can, I know we're going to send a follow-up, but if you want to drop it in the chat, feel free. Um, and then Adrian, maybe I'll kick it to you for, um, want to take us away. Sure. Thank you all so much. I'm always so happy to be, you know, bringing fresh programming to Naturally New York. And obviously, please fill out that survey so we also can influence future planning decisions on what you, what you would like to learn about next. Um, I did drop in the chat here uh, a link to our events page and some upcoming live events that I wanted to make you all aware of. Um, the next one that we're going to be hosting is in uh, recognition of an a summit that the Naturally Network is hosting focused on highlighting women in CPG. So it is a two day virtual seminar, um, but we are hosting a live event um, attached to supporting that seminar. And that will be at CBX offices, the link there to RSVP. Following that, we are hosting a Friendsgiving celebration in partnership with Rethink Food. A portion of those ticket sales is going back to Rethink to help food and security in New York City. So please check it out. It's actually a really cool space down on Houston Street. And we're actually taking over like the commercial kitchen. Like it's a full, like it's a very unique experience. So um, I'm excited to, to kind of host that one. And then what I'm really excited to share is our holiday bazaar. So please mark your calendars for Wednesday, December 11th. Details about this event will be released next week. It's gonna be our most anticipated event of the season. We are building a holiday marketplace. Uh, influenced by the shops at Bryant Park. And so we're expecting over 25 exhibitors. If anyone here is interested in sampling um, or being a part of that, of course, you're, you're going to receive a lot of information on, on what that entails uh, very, very soon. But, you know, and, and in addition to the marketplace, there's going to be a huge networking event. So we're anticipating roughly 300 people. Um, hope to see you there as well. If you haven't signed up to become a member of Naturally New York, please do so. If you do so in the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to give you two complimentary months for uh, so uh, you hear that first actually and um, yeah of course if you have any questions at all don't hesitate to reach out we are here for you info at naturally new york thank you all again for participating in today thank you to our incredible panelists and partners um i'm adrian delicio by the way i'm the executive director of naturally new york and it's a pleasure to be here with you all today so have a wonderful weekend thanks everyone